Blood sugar is really important, but it's something that most of us never learn anything about. So today I'm gonna to share with you the most important thing that you need to know about blood sugar. Blood sugar is one of the most basic things about our bodies. I mean, it's literally the energy moving through our veins. But what I find is that most people have never learned anything about their blood sugar, especially the foods that actually affect your blood sugar. Knowing what affects your blood sugar is something that's really simple, but it can make a big difference. So I'm gonna tell you all about it today. Now, real quick, if you are new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Sarah. I'm a registered dietitian, and this channel is all about food and healthy eating and that sort of thing. So if you like that kind of thing and you want to see more videos about it I make new videos every Tuesday and Thursday so make sure that you click that subscribe button so the first thing you should know about blood sugar is that food affects your blood sugar whether you have diabetes or not but not all food does affect our blood sugar there are only certain types that do and those are carbohydrates now the thing with carbohydrates is a lot of people think of them as being bad we hear about low carb diets and now I'm telling you that carbs affect your blood sugar but the thing is is that carbs aren't good or bad they're a part of our diet. They're something that we need to eat. We just need to make sure that we're getting the right amount. If we have too much carbohydrate, then our blood sugar could go up too high and then we don't feel great. But if we don't have enough carbohydrate, then our blood sugar could be too low and we're not going to feel too great then either. So the first group of food that has carbohydrates is grain. So these are things like rice, flour, wheat, barley, rye, oats, tortillas, breads, cereals, all of these things fit into the grain group. And the thing with grains is that whether it's a whole grain or it's not, it still has carbs. So brown rice and white rice both still have carbs. Whole wheat bread and white bread both have carbs. And that's a common misconception for people is that if I'm having whole grain or brown rice or whatever, then I don't have to worry about it. But that's not true. Now, whole wheat bread and brown rice, they do have other things in them. They have more fiber, which is a good thing for blood sugar. And they do have extra vitamins and minerals that the refined grains don't, but they still do have carbs. The next group are our starchy vegetables. So these are things like potatoes, sweet potatoes, corn, peas, and and beans. And while these are all healthy foods, they still have carbohydrate and they still affect our blood sugar. You'll also notice that sweet potatoes and white potatoes both affect blood sugar. Again, they have different nutrients. They're different foods. A lot of people think of sweet potatoes as being somehow healthier when they're really not. They're just different from white potatoes. But either way, they both still have carbs. Another food group that has carbs is fruit. And this probably makes sense because fruit is sweet and we know that sugar affects our blood sugar. Again, this doesn't mean that fruit is bad or you shouldn't eat fruit. It just means that it does affect your blood sugar. So you want to make sure that you're not eating too much or too little. Another note on fruit is that fruit juice and dried fruits are going to raise your blood sugar more than the whole fruit. And the reason for this is when we look at juice, it's taking out all of the fiber. So with an orange, a whole orange, you're getting fiber, which slows down your digestion and gives you a little bit of a slower release of that sugar. But when you have juice, it's all coming in really fast. There's no fiber to slow it down. So it's going to hit your bloodstream a lot quicker. Also with juice, you're probably going to eat a lot more. You'd probably only eat one orange, but a glass of orange juice could have two or three or four or even more oranges in it. On the other side, dried fruit takes out most of the water. So again, it's much more concentrated just in a different way. And you're probably going to eat a lot more dried fruit than you would if it wasn't dried. Eating a handful of grapes and eating a handful of raisins is really different. You can probably eat a lot more raisins in one sitting than you would ever eat of whole grapes. So bottom line, when you're looking at juice, or dried fruit, make sure you're paying attention to the amount and try not to go overboard. Next up is dairy. And dairy has natural milk sugar in it called lactose. So things like milk and yogurt are gonna have carbohydrates in there. Then we also have the sugars. So white sugar, brown sugar, honey, maple syrup, molasses, hard candies, all of these things have carbohydrate. Now it's important to see again that there are healthier foods in here like honey, maple syrup, more whole food sweeteners, and refined sweeteners like white sugar and hard candy. While the honey and the maple syrup might be more of a real food, it definitely has some other minerals and things in there, it still has carbs. So carbohydrate isn't about healthy or unhealthy. Healthy foods have carbs and less healthy foods have carbs too. You also have to think about combination foods. So these are foods that have several of these different categories mixed together. So a good example would be cake. There's flour in the batter, 
so that's a grain. There's a lot of times also milk in there, so that brings in the dairy component. And then you're gonna have sugar in the cake and then also in the frosting. And apple pie is another great example because you have the crust, which is grain, but then you also have the fruit and the sugar inside. Ice cream has milk and sugar. Flavored yogurts have milk and sugar. Cereal, a bowl of cereal, is gonna have the grain, which is the cereal, probably some sugar on the cereal, depending on what type you get. And then you're putting milk on there too, and maybe even some fruit. Now that doesn't mean that you can never eat those foods ever, it just means that you're probably gonna have a smaller amount of them because they do have so many of those carb foods all in one package. And with all of this, it's really about the amount that you're eating. Now, for every person, it's gonna be a little different depending on how active you are, how tall you are, how much you weigh, and a bunch of other different factors. But it's all about getting the right amount for you. Some foods that people think of as being like really tough on their blood sugar, it's just because we eat a lot of them. With pasta, people, a lot of times eat a huge plate of pasta. They don't just eat a small amount. Or like watermelon is a food that a lot of people say, oh, that really runs up my blood sugar. But it's because with watermelon, a lot of times we eat a huge bowl, whereas if you were eating an apple, you probably only eat one. So it kind of contains the amount of carbohydrate and sets a natural limit for you. With watermelon, you don't really get that. Another thing to remember is that while fat and protein don't affect our blood sugar directly like carbohydrates do, they can help. And the reason for that is fat and protein slow down our digestion. So if you were to just eat a slice of whole grain toast that's basically just carbs, it's gonna hit your bloodstream pretty quickly and you're gonna have a more quick release of blood sugar. But if you put some peanut butter on that piece of toast, now you're adding in fat and protein that slows the digestion down. And so the carbs are gonna get released more slowly into your bloodstream. And the most important thing to remember is that carbs aren't bad. You don't wanna cut out carbs altogether and both healthy and unhealthy foods can have carbohydrate. It's all about getting the right amount for you and eating an overall healthy diet to make sure that your body's in the best shape possible. And let me know in the comments if you found this information helpful, if you learned anything new. I hope you liked the video. And if you are new here and you want more healthy eating tips and nutrition info and healthy recipes, make sure that you subscribe because being healthy, eating healthy, and living a healthy lifestyle really doesn't have to be complicated. And I wanna show you how to do it. And if you're loving the free info here, but you're finding that you need something more personalized, don't forget that I do offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching. So if you're interested in working with me, just let me know and we can get that set up for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.